compound fishing. If your passion is crappie fishing, you found your home. Sponsored by these great companies. Folks, technology is going to change. And live scope is here. And that's not going to change. And we have to adapt to it. Just like side imaging 360 and all the other big innovations that came to fishing, live scope's here and we need to adapt and to adopt. Today I'm out here on Crab Orchard and this is the maiden voyage with live scope. So I'm not going to tell you I'm an expert at all at live scope. I'm learning along with you during this episode. So sit back, relax. Here we go. We're out here on a Crab Orchard trying to buy a bunch of different things. I uh, haven't been on Crab Orchard in a while, but we've got a tournament coming up, so I'm going to start fishing Crab Orchard quite a bit. And um, we've got a single rig minnow set up. I've got a double jig set up with some crappie monster baits. And uh, we've got the live scope going on right here. <laughs> We're trying it out for the first time. This is in no way is going to be the tutorial on the live scope, as this is the first time I have been out here with it. So I am just learning it seeing uh, it's in a temporary location obviously and so it's kind of hard right now for me to watch it watch my buoy watch my monitor a lot going on what I can tell you is I can definitely see fish down there lining it up with my jigs and my minnow that's a different story I haven't figured out what's the best setting on the live scope to make myself feel real comfortable. So, but it's coming folks, it's coming. It's kind of exciting. All right, folks, I, what I wanted to do was just kind of talk a little bit more about this live scope. So I just got back off of crab. I wanted to show you guys what went into mounting, putting the actual live scope on the boat, but also why I chose what I chose in terms of screen. And that's your biggest, honestly, your biggest choice is what kind of screen you want to go with. So. Obviously, let's just talk about the live scope itself. First, we start off with the actual transducer right here. Um, currently, I am positioning it on my boat just for um, temporarily because it's temporarily mounted. I got a new boat coming, so I'm thinking, well, I'm going to put it on the actual motor itself, the actual trolley motor itself right now. But the long term plan is actually when I get the new boat is to use the mount from cornfield crappie which you'll see right here and what that mount will do is that will get it off the actual trolling motor give it some separation i'll also get to use that cable saver and that's going to help me well protect my cable so i'm going to do that when i get the new boat so for right now until i get that new boat we're going to mount it right on the trolling motor just like this okay now what's nice about live scope is that it's really easy to maneuver so you can either have down imaging with the live scope or you can actually be viewing forward and it's simple as a click just like this it's just boom boom and now you're looking way ahead and as I get I do this it's now still looking ahead and if I actually want down straight down I would have it in this position right here that's actually gonna be straight down but I actually like a forward looking view so I not only get down below me I also can project further out so I've got it mounted like I said to my trolley motor wired up and then it goes to a thing what I'll just call it a module I guess it's kind of like an amp it looks like an amp if you had an amplifier back in the days this is what it looks like this would be a small amp but it's only looks like you know it's roughly 10 by 4 or 5 maybe something like that it's not very big but you do have to find a place for it I'm hoping in my next boat I'll be able to mount it maybe underneath the uh, the recess for my uh, trolley motor pedal. I think that would be pretty sweet location. But until we figure that out, um, it goes up here on the deck temporarily. So without a doubt, you're gonna have to find room for this. Um, you have to run power to this, but then you also have to run power to your monitor. So you have to have two power sources. I simply, in a temporary situation, I, I brought two cables from my batteries all the way up here and I have them both locked into that. So each need their own power source. You would think that that would just go straight into the module, but it doesn't work that way. So once I decided the location for the module, I brought the monitor and right now, currently I'm just laying it here on the, on the deck. 
until I get my double mount, which I will do that here shortly, mounted up with my Helix 9. So the plan is that. Here it comes again, right there. There it was, a little bit of a bite. It came right over to it. Now that was pretty awesome. That was really neat to see. I watched that fish come all the way over on that brush pile. Out on the water, I had several experiences like this, and here's actually some of the live footage from LiveScope showing. You can see my two jigs on the far left, and I'll show. I'll have an arrow here shortly to show you those two jigs. And then you actually watch a fish come up. You see it? Bam! Pops the bottom one, kind of hanging around there now, and then it's neat to see a fish actually not reacting to the bait color. So I also want to freeze it right here because I want to show you how far I'm out in four live scope. Look at that. I'm out there at 60 feet and I think at one point I'm even out there at 80 feet. So what I learned as I was out on the lake is that I need to shrink that up. Maybe keep it around 20 or 30 and that makes it even more defined, even bigger pictures and even better representation of what you're seeing below. A little bit of a pop as I left the top jig. So I just saw it hit the birthday cake. So I'm going to switch out the bottom one to a Firefly birthday cake. A little bitty, but that's awesome. I can see it. Go for that top one. Maybe that baby shad color is the color to go for. You little bitty guy. All right, we're going to move on to a different spot, but that's fun. Uh, definitely a different type of fishing. So what you heard there was me being able to watch a fish pass up the bottom jig and actually go for the top one. Now they're the same color. The only difference between these two jigs, and you see them here on the live scope, is that one's a baby shad shape and the other one is a firefly. And it opted to go past the firefly and go to the baby shad shape instead. So guess what I did? I actually switched them out. Both went with baby shad birthday cake. This is great technology. This is something that you're not guessing at now. You're actually getting to watch a fish decide which one is better for it. This is the second time on this day that I was able to watch a fish bypass a color, bypass a shape, and decide which one it wanted. And I think that's just huge. No more guessing. You actually see it happen. Didn't catch a fish there after, after the initial first two. I just wanted to show you guys these images just to show you how clear it is compared to even down imaging. This is like 3D. It's like seeing anything and everything that's around these stake beds. And you clearly see the stake beds. It's amazing. So as we head to our next spot, so two things I've picked up. One is making sure your distance from your boat is something that's actually realistic. I think 30 to 40 foot at this point, again, I'm a new person with this, is probably the most you ever want and it'll give you the most detail on your live scope. Number two, there's actually a, thing, a function called enhance or brightness and you can tweak that just a little bit to make your picture better or worse. And so tweaking that just a little bit might help as well. But those are the only two things I've messed with on this unit so far. Um, I'm really looking forward to getting my double mount. That's a huge thing because right now I'm kind of having to look down to the right, having to look up at my 2D, but I'll tell you, it's changing the way I think about fish. It's also changing how I feel about 2D. I used to be really satisfied with 2D, but to see these fish swimming around is a different ball game. What's interesting is I just saw a fish come up to my jig head and look at it. Looks like it was interested and it went away from it. That was very interesting. I'm wondering if I need to change that color. Went right up to it like it was going to strike it and then all of a sudden it peeled away.
the sun coming up, obviously this is stained water, so it's gonna it's gonna warm up a lot quicker. But I'm fishing pretty darn deep right now, 14 feet. The live scope's fantastic from the standpoint I can really see the detail of these uh, stake beds. And I can see fish in them. Rather than a blob, I can see fish from time to time swim around. Um, I'm getting better. Just marking a ton of fish on a live scope, and they're just not very active. But you know, that's a little 10 inch. Just stacked down there. Now, we will be fishing crab for a while now. Uh, we'll be back and forth from Egypt, but crab orchard's gonna be the where I'll be fishing. Uh, just fantastic fish on this lake. A lot of fish. Oh, it was big. It wasn't no crappie. Bam, good fish. As my boy fishing Ken would say, that's a supermodel. So let's talk about, so LiveScope was awesome today. It was fun to watch the fish come up to the baits. Um, it was really fun to watch the, the fish come up to the baits and then know visually that you need to change colors. So, and that's what we identified today. What we identified was the one color wasn't working. We changed it to the birthday cake from Crappie Monster and all of a sudden four fish caught on, on that bait. So it was nice to see something confirmed, like rather than just sit around, I guess, for an hour looking for the bait and uh, I'm not getting a bite. Okay, I'll switch. Okay, I'll switch. Okay, I'll switch. They get a visual representation of that, watching fish come up aggressively and then stop and not want to bite into it, not want to take it. Take it. Uh, told me I needed to change colors and that definitely helped. So your biggest decision, your biggest decision on LiveScope is going to be your monitor. And you can go with the nine inch screens or you can bump it up a notch and go to the 10 inch screens. Um, I've heard of a lot of issues with the nine inch screens. I don't want to sell, I mean, perhaps there are a lot of people not having issues, but um, water, them um, frying because there's a, I guess some type of connection behind it that you plug into the module and if that gets wet it can fry the unit so the garmin the 1042 which is the one i chose let's see here so that's the 1042 xsv and i'll tell you the difference between that one and the 1022 those are your those are your next bump ups from the nine inch screens um, First and foremost, a 1042 costs $1,500. So it's definitely expensive. The 1022 is also a 10 inch screen, but it only costs about I think, roughly $1,000. The reason why there's a difference is that this guy has all the networking, the ability to uh, down scan, side imaging, all of that stuff is built into this unit. So if I ever wanted to sell this unit, I wanted to go bigger or wanted to change, I could sell this unit very easily because it has the ability to do everything else. A 1022, you'll have to purchase, I guess, a network module on top of the 1022 if you want to do anything other than live scope. So if you have a plan that you might want to do something more down the road, you're going to go to 1042. If you think this monitor is only going to be live scope and that when you resell it to somebody, they're only going to want to do live scope, then go 1022. You're going to save some money. So that's why I went with the, I believe in buying, I believe in buying the biggest screen possible. So 
I went with the 10. I wasn't willing to go to the 12, but I was willing to go to the 10. And um, I feel really good about that. One of the things I noticed out on Crab Orchard today was that I had my settings scanning out to about 80 feet. And that made my brush piles and everything look really small. I figured this out roughly around an hour into our trip. I scaled that back to about I scaled that back to about 20 feet because reality is if I'm jigging in front of my pole, my, my boat, I don't need to be anywhere more than 20 feet, 20 feet, knowing where brush piles are. And I have my marks on my helix. I feel like 20 feet is a good number for me to be scanning out in front of me. Maybe I'll change that. This was the, the maiden voyage. So I don't know. Um, but I felt good about 20 foot. I believe that's what I had it on. I guess we'll have to check the footage there. Maybe it was 30, maybe it was 40, but I definitely scaled it back and it made the image much bigger. You definitely see fish moving around. The trick right now in terms, what I feel is knowing where your pole is, your jig is, your minnow is, and trying to keep it in the screen for live scope. I think that's the trick for me right now. So I'm struggling with whether or not I want it mounted on the trolling motor or if I want it fixed mounted going straight. I don't know what that looks like yet. So I think I'm going to definitely try both ways and get some feedback from other people. For right now, you know, mine's mounted on that trolley motor and I have an Ultrax. So you know, if you have an Ultrax, it goes like this. Bzz, 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 bzz. So if I make any sudden movement, boom, I've got live scope going over here. Next time I go, boom, it's going over here. And so it's hard for me to keep my jigs in focus to watch what's happening. Whereas maybe if it was sitting straight, no matter what I'm doing with the trolling motor, it's, it's, it's staying straight and that's where my poles are always gonna be at primarily. Um, I guess the downside of that would be is if you're spidering and you wanna see what's going on with all your poles, you wanna be able to scan around and see what's happening. I don't know. So I'm trying to figure this out myself. <laughs> I have no idea. But I can tell you this, that I've been out there once with it and it really excited me. So I cannot wait to go out tomorrow and do it again and learn more and learn more. And I think once I get done with this temporary setup, get a double mount, I need to, I need these screens in front of me. I need, I need, it needs to be more convenient for my eyes. I can't be looking down here and then trying to look up here for the Helix. Um, I think it's gonna be fantastic, actually. I'm very, very excited. More excited than I was about side imaging because I really struggled initially two years ago. So that's gonna end it. First experience with live scope, not bad. You still have to catch the fish though. That's what I'm getting off of it. And I'm definitely learning that uh, the positioning of the unit regards to your fishing pole. So that was, you know, first time out. Not bad, not bad. I can't wait to get it actually mounted in a position that it makes it more convenient. It's hard to look down to the left and look, look, back, look back up to my other screen. So when it gets all set up, especially in the new boat, uh, I really look forward to it. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe, hit that thumbs up. Is that not a fish? Well, you know what a fish is here. And um, I can't tell you how many times out there on Crab Orchard today that we were going through areas and I didn't see any fish, and that, but I said, we're gonna fish it anyway. In my mind, I was saying, we're fishing it. And we go up there and boom, there's fish. So this guy sees fish, side imaging sees structure. That's the way I'm looking at it right now. I'm, com I'm looking at it also like that's x-ray. If you're, if you're in the medical industry, that's an x-ray. This is an MRI. This really shows the detail and that excites me. So, hey, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And uh, again, we're going back out. We're going to be doing a ton of these videos on live scope. Um, and as well as we're going to go back and do a lot more side imaging too, because I think that's just as important. I think both of them together are important. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Take it easy.